Well, aren't you a regular Nancy Drew? I learned that from the Nancy Drew detective. Okay, go. You think you can follow the clues and solve the case of the missing condiment, Nancy Drew? You guys have read every Nancy Drew mystery ever written. Nancy, please tell me you're joking. Wow, you suck at this Nancy Drew stuff. You should get a new hobby. My name is Carson Drew, and this is my assistant, Nancy. 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 It's curtains for you, Miss Drew. Nancy. Nancy Drew strikes again. A regular Nancy Drew. And hello, regular Drews. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to episode 63. Yes, today we are covering a big one. A big one. A, a beloved, beloved horror interactive PC game, uh, frequently requested, and actually the first topic that we've ever covered in our podcast. Yeah. We're circling back to Secret of Shadow Ranch. Yay! Yes, this is game number 10, um, and as you pointed out, this was released almost exactly 19 years ago, um, July 20th of 2024. Wow. Crazy. So crazy. It's also a, an entire coincidence that we decided to cover this now. Um, our patrons voted on it, and um, it just happened to, we're happened to release this episode the day after the anniversary of the game, which is crazy. Perfect timing. <laughs> Perfect timing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we love Shadow Ranch. I mean, Corey, you said it was your favorite. Oh, absolutely. My favorite game, yes. <laughs> it's definitely up there for me. It's just a classic. It's such a classic. Oh, yes. I mean, the setting is so iconic, and it's just such a fun game to play. I think I've heard a lot of critiques that it's too easy. Okay. Um, but I don't. I don't think that that's that's necessarily true. I mean, maybe it's it's easy, but I feel like the reason that it is easy is because it's just so well constructed. Sure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like you're not questioning. There's nothing that is really that confusing because everything lines up really well right. to send you on the right path. So I don't think it's like it's not easy in like the fact that it's not challenging it's easy and that it doesn't make you struggle to get to a result right you know? yeah yeah it's not not challenging but there's some good puzzles in it I'll give it that mm -hmm. oh my god I mean the whole treasure hunt aspect is like so good Unmatched. such a quality treasure hunt oh yes um just yeah just I think probably the best treasure hunt that I've ever like experienced mm -hmm. in any in any format and so it's just like every other treasure hunt puzzling situation i am constantly comparing back to the treasure hunt in this game yes because it's so high quality top tier top tier how do you beat dirk valentine you can't how do you, you beat can't. that you can't i mean it's just a natural poet i would say he probably should have been a poet mm. in another life yeah because all of his clues rhyme yeah is so well um, it's just, oh, oh. Also, listen, 10 points, 100 points, a million points to Her Interactive for deciding to get a voice actor to narrate Dirk's letters. Oh, yes. In that Southern mm -hmm. accent. So, so iconic. So good. And immediately, like, transports you directly back to 1890 and, you know... Arizona like just so good so good I'm trying to think of other games where they really did that but I, I'm coming up short but it was this was the right game to do it for I think definitely absolutely absolutely it really it just really allowed the game and the setting to really shine through really put you in a place and time you know absolutely oh <laughs> Okay, three words. Ranch. Dude ranch. Mm -hmm. Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Cow I mean, let's make it cowboys. Cowboys. Let's yeah. make it cowboys. Because because the cowboys in this game were real 
real, real special. Um, Forbidden love. Mm, oh, God. Yes, mm. Corey. <laughs> forbidden love. Three instances of forbidden love in this game, at least, mm -hmm. if not more. Um, yeah, so forbidden love, cowboys. God, this is such a vibe already. Wait, three forbidden instances. Love, cowboys. I'm trying to think of the third one. Not Nancy well, and Dave. List them off. Yes, <laughs> okay. Nancy and Dave. Okay. <laughs> of course, I'm <laughs> talking about Nancy and Dave. <laughs> oh, you have a steady back home. <laughs> Um, sort of, <laughs> sort of, Nancy replaces, sort of, we're going to have to talk about that uh, later. I'm um, sure Ned would be thrilled to know that he's a sort of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, It's such a sick, sick burn to Ned when he's <laughs> like, do you have a steady boyfriend? And she says, she replies with, sort of. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh my he's God. There. So, so dramatic. He's, oh, I love he's it. male and he's a friend. He's there. Does that count? <laughs> oh, no. She wants so badly to say no to this man. She wants to be like, no, I absolutely am not seeing anyone. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Free as a bird, Dave. Free as a bird. Take me away yes. on the back of your horse. <laughs> okay, okay. So, cowboys, forbidden, cowboys, forbidden, forbidden love, love, and, and then produce. Cake. Cake. Yes. <laughs> went to food we both knew that that's how we could complete this, this <laughs> vegetables eggs cake yeah oh my gosh i love making the shadow ranch cake me too i wrote that as a note and this, you did awesome. like, this is my favorite part of the game is making the shadow ranch cake and it's not that hard it's certainly a little bit complicated and annoying but i just love watching the baking animation oh yes <laughs> the magic spoon stirs and and paint and when the cake rises and mm -hmm. painting the icing. Oh, so I love doing the tulip. Yeah, so good, so good. Okay, so food <laughs> so so is yeah. our shadow ranch cake. <laughs> what uh, that is that is the best three words I think that we've ever had. Like I, I've always imagined that the three words are just kind of like an incentive for people to just go experience whatever it is that we are, you know, going to be discussing. Yeah, and. Cowboys, forbidden love, and food is. I'm there. There's. I, I'm jumping into whatever that is. Uh, a million percent. <laughs> what I wouldn't give to spend a summer on Shadow Ranch. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. I mean, I don't know that I'd want to be picking ripe vegetables and having Shorty yell at me every day for not. for picking no. <laughs> the right ones. No, I don't want to do but chores. I just want to. I'd go horseback riding yeah. and explore old ghost towns and eating oh, cake. Ghost. And talking oh, to, to Dave. <laughs> yes, just bake some cakes, go exploring, mm -hmm. not do any chores. That's a good summer. Sit right by there. the fire yes. on the other side of hot cowboys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> but I will not be helping with the chickens. I'm sorry. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we won't be doing that. Gross. <laughs> That's a okay. good start. Okay. That is a very good start. Shall we jump in, Corey? Absolutely. Okay, so the game setup is very similar to other games of this era in the Nancy Drew universe. Um, we have our banger of an intro music that we've discussed <laughs> previously. We have our classic stacked books menu and a junior and senior game choice. Um, but this time, Nancy has a cell phone! Yay! Uh, finally! We don't have to go to a specific location to call people, kind of. We do have to kind of watch our cell service in this game because, of course, we are out, you know, horseback riding into God knows where. There's a way um, to get around that, by the way. Yeah, so you don't I know. have to <laughs> keep walking back and forth to the ranch. But sorry, anyway. Yeah. Um, you can call for Mary Yazzie's. That's always what I, I do, is I horseback ride back to Mary's because it's a little shorter. Mm. <laughs> um, and we also have her notebook and inventory in this game um, in, you know, our little menu down at the bottom. So, yeah. Um, so, basically, the premise of this game uh, it starts off, Nancy is writing a letter to Hannah because she has arrived at Shadow Ranch, um, which is a real working ranch outside of Phoenix, Arizona. 
Um, and she came here because um, she meant to come visit on like a vacation thing with Bess and George because Bess and George are related to the Raleigh's who own Shadow Ranch. Um, but Bess and George's flight didn't get in when she thought it would. So she's here alone. Uh, she got to the airport um, and she was picked up by Dave Gregory, the ranch foreman. And he told her that she needed to call the Raleigh's right when she got in. Raleigh's just recently purchased this ranch um but like why aren't they here like they're supposed to be here why aren't they here why can't we talk to them but dave like wouldn't say another word to her about the situation and just told her that she needed to call the raleigh's so everything's weird <laughs> right off the bat it's weird and it's awkward and nancy's like i'm at this ranch alone i don't know any of these people where's my yeah. <laughs> where are my hosts um and nancy says that she has a bad feeling about it Love Nancy and her bad yes. feelings. Um, so when we start the game, we're like immediately transported into the living room of Shadow Ranch, like the main building. Um, and it's just a dream. It's just so beautiful. It's the whole ranch, but especially the living room is decorated in like this Western mission-ish, like Pueblo style mm -hmm. decor. Um, and there are like these beautiful textiles, just, clearly either authentic or inspired by indigenous designs. Um, there are like oh, so many explorable places in this game. Mm -hmm. We get to see the living room, the kitchen of the house area. We see essentially what is like the backyard of the ranch um, where there's like a chicken coop and a pump house and a little garden and a fire pit situation. And of course there's the horse stables yes. and the corral Um and then once we are actually able to get on a horse and explore outside of the ranch, we can just, we can visit so many places, including, as we said before, uh, an abandoned ghost town. Oh, one of my favorite locations in the whole game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a nearby store that we can go to, and then there are just other locations throughout the desert. That's nice because it keeps like opening up the more you explore, yes. like, you find more locations as you go throughout the game. And even like mm -hmm. the ending, you have to go to a new place for that. It's really fun. It's so good. It's really, it really allows you, it makes you feel like you're actually going out on trails and right. like exploring places out in the world. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. It doesn't just give you the whole map all at once. It takes some effort. Um, but first, before we can actually go explore anything or do anything or talk to anyone, we need to call the Raleigh's because that's what Dave told us to do. Figure out what's going on. So we call them and we meet them over the phone and they are so cute, so adorable. I love Aunt Bet and Uncle Ed. Oh, yes. Um, I wish they were my Aunt Bet and Uncle Ed. Um, Mrs. Raleigh, Bet. Um, tells us that everything is fine now, but last night, Ed, Mr. Raleigh, was bit by a rattlesnake that was in their bedroom. Um, so mm -hmm. they're in the hospital today. <laughs> I would be moving um, tomorrow. Nope. No, thank you. <laughs> um, Ed is doing just fine and much better today, and he should be able to go home soon. But Ed seems to think that he is fine to go home now. Classic. Uh, southern man stoicism situation mm -hmm. so bet has to stay there with him otherwise she's worried that he's just gonna like get up and leave <laughs> on his own. um but she tells us to don't worry about it just go on with our visit as planned you know they'll get there as soon as they can um go meet tex go get a horse go riding and shorty their cook um, has a cookout planned tonight to kind of celebrate us being there. And so she says, just go along with all that. Have a good time. Enjoy your vacation, you know. But she does ask us to run a quick errand for them um, and ride over to Mary Yazzie's store to deliver an envelope. Um, and Dave can give us directions and give us the key to the roll top desk where the envelope is that they want us to take. But then... She's like, oh, there's something else I should tell you about. Um, and yeah, it's like the horse, Bet, Tell her about the horse. And she starts to tell us about the phantom horse. Huh? But before she can tell us anything else, a nurse comes in um, to run some tests for Ed. And then she's like, oh, sorry, dear. Gotta go. Then hangs up. No time to talk about that. Phantom 
course. <laughs> oh, oh, way to such very nice delete there. Up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Such a great start to a game. Oh my gosh. Don't worry, everything's fine. Small rattlesnake incident, but just enjoy your vacation. Oh, by the way, there's a phantom horse. Can't tell you a thing about it. Gotta go. Bye bye. Uh, huh? 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 <laughs> Sorry, actually, Ambed, I cannot go relax and enjoy my vacation now that you dropped the words <laughs> phantom horse and then threw your phone in the ocean. Like, what's going oh on God. here? This game is so good. Such a spook. Just such, such, like, if I could go to a ranch and investigate sightings of a phantom horse, it sounds like heaven. Right. Heaven. Truly. You want to take it? Sure. So, um, at this point, we can go explore the ranch a little bit. Like you said, we can look around and we can start talking to some of the people that work here on the ranch. Uh, first, we're going to go talk to Dave, the ranch foreman, and he is standing out by the chicken coop, kind of, I guess, doing some repairs on it. Um, obviously, first thing we do is ask him about the phantom horse. He tells us that last night, a glowing horse ran up to the ranch out of nowhere and was making this huge ruckus. So, everyone ran outside to see what was going on. Um, And then, you know, as they're all standing out there, the horse runs off into the night before anyone can do anything. Um, But then, of course, they go back in. And this is when Ed got bit by the rattlesnake. Dave, um, he implies that because of all this, like, bad stuff is going on, that this is not a good time for us to be visiting. And so maybe we shouldn't be here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, We do ask him about the envelope from Mary Yazzie that Aunt Bet had asked us to deliver. So he gives us the key to the roll top desk that's in the living room and tells us how to get to Mary Yazzie's store. He tells us that Mary doesn't like the Raleigh's though. And we ask him why he says he doesn't know. He just minds his own business. He just knows that they are not the biggest fans of each other. These cowboys are the biggest gossip. Oh, yeah. They don't want to admit it, but they definitely are. They're like, oh, oh I just mind my business. But Mary Yazzie, she doesn't like the Raleigh's very much. I don't know why. You didn't hear it from me. You but... didn't hear it from me. <laughs> <laughs> so next we can go talk to Tex, who's another ranch hand, and he is very grumpy. Right off the bat, we can tell he's very irritated with us being here. He doesn't really want to have to deal with all these newcomers um, around the ranch. Um, and he doesn't want us causing trouble or being around the horses until he knows that we are responsible enough to to handle horses. He also gives us a list of supplies that we're going to need every day before we're allowed to go out to ride. Um, and he also wants us to pass a horsemanship test um, in the corral before he'll let us like outside to explore more of the area. Um, Before he'll let us try, though, he tells us that he needs us to go give Shorty a hand in the kitchen, and um, we'll need to get a canteen from him anyway for the ride. We learned that the ranch is very shorthanded right now, especially with the Raleigh's gone, so we're all having to pitch in with the chores. Uh, So in the house, we go back inside and we go into the kitchen where we find Shorty Thurman, who's the cook. Um, Shorty's immediately much more friendly than the rest of the people on the ranch that we've met so far. We ask him about the horse, uh, the phantom horse, and he tells us a much more detailed, colorful version of the story. So he tells us that a man named Dirk Valentine was an outlaw around Shadow Ranch back in the 1880s. And legend has it that he fell in love with the daughter of the sheriff. And her name was Frances Humber. Um, And there's actually a beautiful, large portrait of her hanging in the living room of Shadow Ranch that I guess just, like, stayed with the house somehow as it passed down through owners. And the Raleigh's just liked it and wanted to keep it. Um, Eventually, though, the uh, forbidden love was found out by her father, the sheriff, who eventually captured Dirk and had him hung. Um, Now... Supposedly, the ghost of his horse roams the desert and curses anyone who sees it with bad luck. Oh, my God. Um, so. So good. So good. Such an excellent legend. Right. I mean, wow. You want to take it from here? since Sure. Okay. sure. <laughs> so he tells us this, and then he's like, and then right after the horse showed up last night, Ed was bit by the rattlesnake. So seems like the legend could be true, right? Um, then we get our chore list from Shorty. He tells us to go pick the ripe vegetables from the garden, which is just like the worst. It's, it's honestly the worst task (laughs) in the whole game. I don't know why it's so hard, but every time I can't figure out which vegetables are ripe and which ones aren't every time I have such a hard time every single time. And I don't know what the problem is with me. (laughs) 
I've been I've been wanting to make a walkthrough about just how to pick the vegetables. Just the vegetables. <laughs> I played it so many times. I know which ones are the right ones to to mm-hmm. choose. And if, if I had mm-hmm. the uh, technology set up that I needed in order to record something like that, I would yeah. probably make that because <laughs> it is very frustrating. And I think that if it wasn't so frustrating, the rest of the game would be a lot more enjoyable. You know, it sucks when there's something right. like right. that much of a drawback in a game that's so good. I mean, like, it's easy enough to, like, go out there and click on the vegetables and bring them back in. The hard part is determining which ones are ripe and which ones are not, which is just wild. Right, because you get chewed <laughs> out if you pick the unripe yeah. ones. Like, they're so mean about it, and they kick you and out. If you do it, yeah, if you do it too many times and you get kicked out, you have to do a second chance uh-huh. <laughs> for picking vegetables, for God's sake. Anyway, um, so we have to do that. Uh, he also asked us to set up the campfire for tonight's cookout. And so we have to go around the ranch and kind of collect supplies in order to do that. Um, we have to, like, chop some wood. There's different, like, little bits of sticks that we have to pick up for kindling scattered about the ranch we have to find. We also have to go grab some newspaper from the living room um, to use to help us, you know, put at the base to start the fire. And when we pick up the first newspaper, we see that there's an article about bank robbers. Um, who recently robbed a bank in Denver and then got away and are missing, unable to be found. Um, so that'll be relevant later. Interesting. Um, and then when we go out to the fire pit and start building the fire with all of our supplies, we find a little half-burned scrap of paper that seems to have some kind of, like, code on there, or, like, some symbols and some, like, letters that don't appear to be obvious words. So that'll, we'll have to figure out how to decode that later. Then once we finish those chores, Shorty will give us a basket to go collect eggs. And as soon as we put any eggs in the basket, the basket breaks. And we have to reassemble it. Perfect. <laughs> it's a little puzzle. And then we have to come back later to get more eggs. Um, and then once we complete that chore for Shorty, he will give us a water canteen. Um, also, we need to remember that we have to grab the envelope for Mary from the roll top desk. So we go over there and unlock it, and inside we find some other things in addition to the letter. Because, of course, when we unlock a desk, of course we're going to snoop through it. Oh, yeah. (laughs) We just have to. Um, There's, like, some weird, like, lever things. I don't know how you would describe them. They're, like, little metal lever piece things. Um, There's also a receipt of sale to Mary Yazzie for a trunk full of old junk items. Okay, interesting. And we find an angry letter from a disgruntled former employee named Jane Nash. It's clearly not very happy with being let go. Um, At this point, if we haven't called Bess and George yet, they will call us and tell us that they are in Omaha. But uh uh-oh. They had to land the plane for some kind of issue and got routed there. And then we tell them about all the drama that's happening at the ranch with the rattlesnake and the horse. Um, And Nancy implies that she thinks that the phantom horse showing up was just a distraction for the snake accident, Um, which means that the Raleigh's are targets of someone and that someone on the ranch is the one who is responsible for all of this because they had to have access to Raleigh's bedroom. Oh, so George tells us that at the airport, because they're so bored and just waiting uh, to get out of there, she bought a book on 19th century fashion. Um, and accessories (laughs) so that'll obviously be relevant later for us but now that we have this letter from Mary now we can go riding Um, as soon as we pass the horseback test (laughs) horseback riding test Um, so we saddle our horse and head into the corral where Tex will quiz us and we can find all the info that we need to answer his questions correctly in the book in the living room Um, but text like if you don't get them right text will just repeat the questions so really you can just keep going until you get them all correct by like process of elimination (laughs) um and then off we go uh to mary's store we see some beautiful little pictures and the transition as we're writing of like you know the west scenery of the west which is nice i want to go so bad it looks so pretty i know i know (laughs) So we, and then we arrived at Mary's Gifts, which is the name of Mary's store. It's a very cute little shop. She sells all kinds of stuff, including handmade jewelry, um, local art and artifacts, and a bunch of antiques as well. Um, we introduce ourselves, and we start talking about the ranch. And she tells us 
that she knows the Raleigh's have struggled to get the ranch up and running, that it hasn't been easy. And her property line actually runs right next to theirs, so she knows them pretty well. Um, we give her the envelope, uh, and she immediately opens, up, opens it up and reads the letter. Um, it's clearly upset by something that she's just read. So we can ask her about it, like, oh, looks like you got, you know, bad news. What's that about? And she says that they rejected her offer to buy some land from them. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Um, we can actually call the Raleigh's and ask about this later. Um, and they say that she's been wanting this piece of land of theirs for a while, but this is the first time that she put in an official offer. But they don't know why she wants it um, because it just seems to be like an empty piece of rocky land, um, but they don't want to sell off bits and pieces of the ranch. They don't want other people to think that they're interested in selling off bits and pieces of the ranch, so they don't sell it to her. Um, we can also ask Mary about the trunk that she bought from the Raleigh's, and she says she still hasn't been able to open it. Like, it's locked, and she hasn't figured it out, and the Raleigh's also don't know how to get it open, even though she asked them. Um, so we can figure out how to open it. <laughs> Um, but first we can look around the shop and she's got a lot of very cool things in here that we can look at. She has a display of Charlena Purcell novels. Oh. Um, and Charlena's bio tells us that in addition to being a romance author, she is also a historian familiar with this area. How convenient. <laughs> How convenient. Perfect. <laughs> we'll definitely need to talk to her later. Um, she also has some old photos hanging up in the shop and some prints that you can look through. Um, there's a display of petrified wood, which is very cool. Um, we also see a set of tuning forks that have the initials FH on the outside. That's interesting. We do know a couple people with the initials of FH, and it's not Frank Hardy that these are referring to. Darn it. <laughs> Dang <If> only. it. only. <laughs> um... There is also a mini game in her store, similar to, very similar to the bee's knees in the final scene that we just played. Um, essentially, you're trying to get this little road runner to its hole without being caught by like the coyotes. And when we win all three levels of that mini game, we get an old token that says Dry Creek Merchants. Huh. Interesting. Um, and then in the corner, we see the old trunk that Mary uh, bought from the Raleigh's. On the top of it, it has the initials E-H and A-H inside of, like, a heart. Does that seem significant? Um, when we, like, investigate it, turns out that we can actually insert those little lever things that we found in the roll-top desk and turn them in different ways in, like, these three little holes. But what directions should we turn them in? We don't know. Mary does say at this point, as we're over there fiddling with the trunk, that if we can manage to get it open, she'll let us keep something from inside of it. Oh, even better. Nice. So, you know, now that, you know, we finally have this question of who are these people? Who does this trunk belong to? Sounds like a good opportunity for us to call the office of Charlena Purcell. <laughs> that was um, good. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, and we reach her assistant. Um, and so we explain, yeah, we've run across this trunk that may be related to Dirk Valentine and Francis Humber. And at first, before we say that, he's just like, well, good, hello, well, this is the office of Charlena Purcell. How might I help you? But as soon as we bring up Dirk and Francis, he's like, wait, who? Hold on. Did you I'll just connect say, you to Charlena hold Purcell. on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, so we get to talk directly to Charlena Purcell. And she, honestly, in this game, I thought she wasn't super, wasn't a super interesting character. She didn't give us a whole lot to go on, but she is very helpful in our case, of course. Um, so we tell her about the trunk, and she tells us that she thinks that E-H and A-H stand for Eldridge and Abigail Humber, who would be Francis Humber's grandparents. Um, and so she imagines that this trunk was made and the heart on top of it is actually commemorating their wedding day. And she gives us the date of their wedding day. We can ask her how much you know, like, or how come you know so much about this area, um, and Francis in particular. And she says she's actually researching all of this stuff for a potential future book. Okay. Uh, which is very cool. Um, and she would be actually be very interested to know what is inside this trunk and, you know, if we know anything else about the area. And we happen to mention, oh, we're actually staying at Shadow Ranch. Um, and she's like, really? 
Excellent. <laughs> and she tells us that she'll, in the future, have her assistant put our call straight through to her. So very cool. Um, so with that information from Charlena, we can move the levers to match essentially with the numbers that are the dates of uh, Francis's grandparents' wedding anniversary as if they were like a clock, like clock face, mm-hmm. like 12, 1, 2, 3, right? Um, and boom, the trunk opens. Um, and inside there's like just, yeah, most of it looks like just a bunch of old crap. There's like scissors and like an old rusty pan. A blanket, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's like just some weird round thing in there that I don't know what it is. And um, an, a, a sheriff star. That's very yeah. cool. And an old pocket watch. Um, and so we can choose what to take out of this. And if we don't choose the right thing, which is the pocket watch, take the pocket watch. You can come back and, and swap it out later. Mm-hmm. After we leave Mary Yazzie's, we can head back to Shadow Ranch and we unsaddle our horse, whose name is Bob. Um, and we go to put Bob back in his pen at the ranch. And then we go to put our saddle back in storage. And we accidentally knock Texas Saddle, who is, I guess, his, uh, his saddle is hanging like right next to where Bob's saddle is. And an envelope falls out of, of Texas Saddle. So we open it, obviously, because we're Nancy Drew. We're nosy. Um, and it's a birthday card from Jane Nash. And it addresses Texas, her brother. Da, da, da. That's kind of interesting. Is Tex maybe, you know, helping his sister, like, get revenge on the Raleigh's, possibly? Um, so we go and confront Tex about this, and he accuses us of snooping, which, I mean, we were. Um, and he gets mad, and he won't talk to us for a while. <laughs> Shorty will tell us a little bit more about the land situation with Mary, though, when we go ask him. Um, he says that she says that she wants the piece of land because she feels spiritually drawn to it, but he thinks that there's, like, another reason that she's not saying. Like, there's something more to it. Um, we head back into the living room, though, and we notice that there is a built-in chest in the corner of the living room that has very similar holes to the trunk at Mary Yazzie's. It has little, I guess, like keyhole shapes and they fit. Those same little lever things fit in this trunk as well. So we figure out how, or we figure out how to open it. We, we have to use a clock on the mantelpiece in here and it's the same colors as the notches that we have to turn the, uh, turn the levers to. Uh, but eventually we do, do get it open. And when we solve it, a panel opens in the back of this old trunk. And what's inside? An old letter addressed to Francis and another little pocket watch thing. Um, so we open up this letter that's addressed to Francis. Oh, and we noticed that it was never opened either. So Francis never actually read this letter. But it's a letter from Dirk Valentine. He's telling her. Ah! <laughs> Here we go. Here oh we go. my gosh. Here we go. Oh. So it's a letter from Dark Valentine, and he is telling her that he's hidden something that he wants her to look for. Um, he also tells her that he's gone and gotten himself arrested, and he knows that, you know, he's probably not getting out of this one. So he wants her to use an enclosed piece of paper to mark where rock pictures are on this map that he's given her. Um, and he says that once she's done that, this thing that she has to mark off on this picture will tell her what to do next. He also says, remember your favorite flowers and the flowers on your favorites. And he says that he's left her a message in his jail cell. Oh, oh I like that. The I like Vex in your brain because when you are thinking real hard, like when you are playing the piano, you are more beautiful than anything in the world. Oh. I am sure to be out of here before you find my treasure. But in case I am not, know that it is all yours and that you are more precious to me than 10,000 treasures put together. Oh, ah! no, no, no. <laughs> Hold on, though. Treasure? Um, and then at the end of the letter, there's a string of numbers. Just random numbers, but apparently this is going to help us on our treasure hunt as well. Very exciting. So, uh, as I said, there's also a pocket watch in this little panel in this trunk, um, and it's a number depression puzzle. Um, And so it's like kind of process of elimination. Once you press one of the numbers, you figure out what order to press them in. And then once you press them all in the right order, the pocket watch opens. Um, Inside is a little chain and like a pen that you can use to open the side of a pocket watch. Um, And we find a picture of Frances Humber and her father, the sheriff. 
We do also find one more thing in this trunk, and that is her father, Merrill Humber's journal. Um, and it's a very sad, sad journal. Um, it's clear from the journal that he cares about Francis very, very much. And it also chronicles his version of the story about how Francis and Dirk um, initially met and got together. And then he learned about Dirk being an outlaw and a criminal and um, felt like he didn't really have a choice but to arrest him and then have him hung and kind of hopes that, like, you know, once he hangs Dirk that, like, Francis will just forget about him. Um, or at least that's what he kind of wanted to happen. But then Francis certainly did not forget about Dirk after he died and then did not forgive Meryl. And then eventually Francis runs away and never, ever came back to Shadow Ranch in her life. Heartbreaking. So sad. So Such sad. A sad story. Such a sad little dynamic for this family. Mm -hmm. to, yeah. Um, yeah. So we... Um, after looking at the pocket watch and getting the little chain and the pen, we can use that other pen to open the pocket watch that we found at Mary's. Um, and it has the same kind of lock as the other one. So we open that one up and inside we see what looks like half of the same picture of Francis and her father. Um, so I think it's just the, like the Francis half of the picture. And when you flip it over, it says green bottle under just handwritten on the back of this paper. Green under bottle what? under what? Yeah. <laughs> um, and that is actually the end of day one. This game, similar to um, Final Scene, is split into three days, although it's not quite as um, like prescriptive of how you have to, to go about the game. Uh, but we get a little cut scene at the very end of the day. This is the campfire that we prepared earlier in the day where they're having dinner that Shorty has cooked. Um, Shorty is yodeling for everyone at the campfire, <laughs> and it's... <laughs> Really, really bad. <laughs> His singing is not great. Um, mm -hmm. Tex is so, like, fed up with this singing. And also he, like, doesn't like the dinner very much. He insults the food a little bit. And then he decides to leave. And then Dave is like, well, yeah, I guess I'm out of here as well. And he goes, ma'am. And he tips up his hat to mm -hmm. us. And then he goes off to bed. And then Shorty starts muttering about how he casts his culinary pearls before uncultured swine. <laughs> and they don't appreciate him. And then he goes to bed as well. So we're just kind of sitting there by ourselves at the campfire. And then who comes along galloping up the road? Or not even the road. Just like up to the ranch. But it's the phantom horse. Ah! It starts whinnying, and then it, it runs past the pump house, and just as it does, a pipe in the top of the building explodes, and then water comes shooting out the top of the building, raining down on everything, um, and then, of course, we have to now, you know, assist with that issue rather than going after the horse. You want to take it with day two? Sure. So, the next morning, we kind of jump to, and we're talking to Aunt and Aunt Bet about the pump house accident and the phantom horse showing up. We can explain that we think it might be a ploy to draw attention away so that someone can sabotage the pump house, but we don't know why that may be yet, though. Um, Nancy, of course, offers to help figure out what's going on, and the Raleigh's gratefully accept her help, and they tell her that she should call the sheriff to you know, talk about the accident. Um, if we pop into the kitchen after that, we can snoop through Shorty's stuff because Shorty is not around right now. Um, and in his little desk in the corner, we can find a map of mineral deposits in the area. Hmm, why would he have that? Um, but as soon as we back out, we are busted. Uh, Shorty pops up and asks us what we're doing, snooping through his stuff. Um, he does tell us that he got those maps because he thought he might find the long lost gold mine around here, but no luck. Um, and he does ask us to refrain from snooping through his stuff again. Ooh. We'll try. We'll try. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Um, and then he gives us more chores to do. You guessed it. Vegetables, gathering eggs. And then he also wants us to bake a cake for Texas birthday. Today. Yay. Our favorite activity. Um, today you can actually get bit by a rattlesnake when gathering the vegetables. So be careful when you see the rattling back up and come back later. Um, and yeah, baking the cake is really fun. There's like a little box of recipe cards you can look through to find the Shadow Ranch cake recipe. And you have to figure out the right measurements to go into this cake. Um, it's, it's so fun. And then once you bake it, you have to assemble the little top uh, flour 
on the cake, which is Shadow Ranch cake. It's clear from the recipe that this is a recipe of Francis Humber's. Yes. So the flour on top is significant. Shorty will also explain when we talk to him that because of the pump house explosion, the water to the house has been cut off and everybody has to get water from the pump in the pump house. And he's so stressed about all of this and all of these accidents. He doesn't know how much longer he can do this, um, you know, because cooking at the ranch for everybody is a hard job when you don't have access to a nearby faucet. All right. Um, yeah. Um, so at this point, we can go and explore the pump house explosion um, but before we can actually go into the area, we have to call the sheriff because there's a sign on the door that says like, no trespassing by order of the sheriff. So we call the sheriff, um, and his name is Sheriff Hernandez. And we explain that we're an amateur detective and we just want to look around to, you know, see, you know, how the police did it all or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. Um, and he says, go for it. You know, he's done in there. He also, as we're hanging up the phone with him, implies that Dave has a crush on us. Well, he's right. Ah, ah. Um, so interesting information to just tuck back into our brain. Um, inside the pump house, it does look like the pipe that exploded was really badly corroded, and so that's likely why it blew. Um, we also can find an arrowhead in the mud down here. And also, now that some stuff has been moved out of the pump house to try to, like, save it, keep it dry, um, we see uh, that some boxes have been moved on the shelves, and behind the shelves, we see some metal bars, behind which is a secret passageway. (laughs) First secret passageway of the game. I think this is our only secret passageway in the game. There are certainly other secret locations but this is our only secret passageway, passage, passage, passageway. Um, no, you're right. Goes, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. It goes down a ladder and into this kind of dugout tunnel um, up this really short flight of stairs and then in through like another secret door into like a little basement area, which looks like it's probably a basement of the main house. Um, and when we walk in, we see Dave searching around under a set of stairs and when we walk in, we startle him, um, and he, we ask him what he's doing. And he eventually sheepishly explains that he is looking for Dirk Valentine's treasure. Ha! Ah! Wonderful. Um, he explains that his great aunt Ellie was Francis Humber's cousin, and when his great aunt died, she left him a bunch of stuff, including a letter from Francis that actually mentioned this treasure. So, and said that she was just too heartbroken to look for it. So if, you know, her cousin, his great aunt Ellie ever found it, it was hers and she could do whatever she wanted with it. So Dave thinks that like, this is, you know, license for him to go search for this treasure. Seems like it. Yeah. Um, He also shows us half a picture he found uh, with, uh, amongst his great aunt stuff with half of a message on the back that says, stairs to cellar. And this is very clearly the other half of the picture that we found in the pocket watch. Um, And so, but that's why he's looking under the stairs to the cellar here. He only has that half of the message and was hoping that the treasure was down here. But, you know, we know that really the whole message is green bottle under stairs to cellar. So we can look for that later. Um, He does tell us, though, that the Raleigh's actually don't, know about this treasure and they don't know that he's looking for it but he swears now that we've you know basically busted him he swears that he is going to tell them about this as soon as they get back Um, but he also swears that he has nothing to do with the phantom horse or the accidents that have been happening you know he's just looking for the treasure and then clearly embarrassed he leaves very quickly (laughs) we believe you dave we know you're telling Uh, the truth (laughs) i don't know (laughs) I think Dave can be a little sus. Oh, no, he definitely is. He definitely <laughs> is. That, that's um, on purpose. But now that Dave has left, we can look around down here. Uh, we find a bottle of acid. So could someone have used this maybe to corrode the pipes and cause the pump house explosion situation? Um, and we also find an old beaded purse from the Chicago Mercantile Company in 1881, but it's missing a section of beading. 
when and when we're on our way out, Nancy actually wonders aloud if the message on the back of the photo actually refers to the second set of stairs to the pump house, not the stairs that Dave was looking under, but the stairs that we came in through the secret passageway. Clever. So, mm-hmm, we open that up, look at those, and voila, we see a little puzzle. It's a slider puzzle, very simple one. And then once we solve it, we get a little green bottle. And inside the bottle um, are a bunch of love letters from Dirk to Francis. It's very sweet. Um, they mention some important things, including getting her picture painted and her favorite shawl. Um, that the purse that we found is actually a favorite of hers as well. And she likes Cappy's crackers. She talks about her cake that she bakes with her favorite flower on it. And also a flower that she has on her letter paper, like her stationery. Um, so flowers on her favorites. This is obviously what Dirk is referring to. And so we're going to have to make a note of what all of these flowers are. So speaking of that purse that was a favorite of Frances's, how convenient that George mentioned previously that she had a book on 19th century fashion and accessories. So let's give Bess and George a call. Um, we learned that they're now in St. Louis because they're <laughs> going in the opposite direction of Shadow Ranch, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. But they got onto a, they finally got onto a plane, um, and then that plane had to divert for bad weather. So now they're stuck in St. Louis. Um, But George is happy because this has given them something to do. They're going to look into this for Nancy. Um, And then we go to look into some of these other flowers that had been mentioned in Dirk's letter. So that giant painting of Francis that's in the living room of of Shadow Ranch, um, we see that if we look at it, we see that she's wearing her favorite shawl in that painting. And then if we look on, like, if we look really closely at the painting, we can see that it's like they painted the actual stitch of the shawl into the painting, which is a really cool detail. But then if we use Nancy's little cell phone to search for different crochet stitches, we learned that this type of stitch is called the daisy stitch. So another flower on her favorite. Um, we re- remember that the cake that we made the flower on that is the tulip. And then we can also talk to Dave a little bit more. And he actually shows us a letter that Francis has sent to his aunt Ellie. Um, And so this is her stationery. We see that that also has flowers on it. And also while we're talking to Dave though, he lets us know that there's an issue with the chicken coop. I guess there's like a big hole in the wire. So he needs to get more supplies in order to patch that. Um, He basically asks us to um, help him out if it's like delivered later in the day to just go ahead and patch it because he doesn't want the chickens like, you know, foam or ball where a fox or whatever could get into the chicken coop and eat them. Dave does also tell us though that there was an old jail cell Um, Because we remember Dirk told us that he left something for Francis in his old jail cell. And so Nancy's like, is there any old jails around here? And Dave tells us that there was probably one over in Dry Creek, which is now a ghost town, but was like, you know, the town back in the day when when Dirk and Francis lived at Shadow Ranch or around Shadow Ranch, I should say. Dirk didn't live there. Um, So we're going to go riding. But first, we have to ask Texas permission. Um, Luckily, he will. um, He's you know, not as mad at us anymore from asking about Jane, Jane Nash yesterday. Um, he will tell us that actually his sister did used to work for the rallies. They used to own a clothing store back in Phoenix and that's where Jane, um, Jane worked for them. Um, but you know, she was really mad at the start, but she's over it now. And you know what? He kind of thinks his sister's a flake anyway, so he can't really (laughs) even blame the rallies for firing her. Um, so (laughs) yeah, but I guess that sort of, you know, throws some suspicion off of himself, sort of. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he does tell us that he'll let us go riding if we feed the horses and chickens. So this is another little puzzle that we have to do. The instructions aren't super clear, so we have to do some math to figure out how much they actually need to eat. Um, but eventually we do figure out the correct amounts for the horses and then the chickens as well. Um, so once we feed the chickens, we learn from Tex that he will give us a lariat if we can complete some barrel racing and a lassoing challenge that he has for us. So we can do that pretty much right away, and then we get our own lasso. How exciting. When we leave, though, finally we're ready to actually go riding um, out to this Dry Creek ghost town place. Um, when we're leaving, though, we see Mary Yazzie and her horse just kind of like standing at the edge of the property of the ranch 
Mm. Hmm. So maybe we should stop by Mary's Gifts later and see, hey, what were you doing over there? Um, but now we can go to Dry Creek, and it is the coolest, the spookiest, uh-huh. the best atmosphere, My probably my favorite place in the whole game. It's wonderful. It's this tiny ghost town that backs up against the side of a rock face, and all the buildings are just, like, super dilapidated and creepy and definitely haunted and just in the <laughs> biggest state of disrepair that you could even think of. Um, some of them you can't even go into because they're just, like, absolutely collapsed. And then there's a few things just kind of scattered about the town that we will need eventually. So we grab some of those things. Um, a few of them are arrowheads, which we will um, we'll need those later. So we grab those. Um, we do also see an old crank sitting on like the porch of the old general store. Obviously, we're going to grab that. Don't even know what we need it for, but we're mm-hmm. Nancy Drew, so it's going it's in the trash, inventory. So pick it up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> One of the first buildings, though, is the old jail where Dirk was held before his execution. Um, so we can go in there, but the cell itself is locked. There's, It's just like this tiny little room with just like a desk and then two cells and then like a bunk in each of the cells. Um, but it's locked, so we're going to have to find another way into it. And then we do also see at the very, it's like, you know, just one row of buildings with buildings on either side of the this main street in town um the very end though is on the left is this building called cappy's where have we heard that name before didn't francis say something about cappy's or liking going to cappy's or cappy's crackers something like that it's locked as well though so we have to call the sheriff to get his permission to enter the building um so we do we call sheriff hernandez he says you know there's not really much out there and really i just locked it up to keep teenagers out from you know getting hurt or injured in this building that might fall down but um, you know what as long as you're careful here's the combination go right ahead so he uh, so obviously we go right in and we see that it's like this old-fashioned saloon obviously it's very run down but there's like an old bar in the corner there's a piano there's like this like game in the corner um and it seems like someone has maybe been in here much more recently than it, the 1800s. There's a sleeping bag in the corner, a thermos, um, somebody's toothbrush. There's like a little box with like stuff in it. It's yeah. So somebody has clearly been using this place to camp out. Uh, we go look at the other side of the room though, closer to the bar, and we see that there is a stack of books. Like, not 1880s books, like, recent books. There's, like, an electrician's manual, but they're super dusty. Like, they've been there for a while, and Nancy is, like, wearing her writing gloves, and we see her, like, wipe some of the dust away so that we can see the title. Kind of weird. Okay, but, like, why is there, like, this super old electrician's manual there? Very odd. Um, There's a little slot machine type game that you can play, like I mentioned. Um, They... Dry Creek coin that we won at the game at Mary's store. We can use that to put that in the machine and then you can play the game. Um, you have to like go back and get more coins so that you can, you know, have enough coins to actually win eventually. But um, when you win, you get an extra token so that you can play again. Fantastic. Great. <laughs> and then we also see an old cracker tin on the bar and it's super, super faded, but we can see just barely we can make out the word crackers and we remember dark and francis loved these crackers from cappies so we have to figure out what the name of these were so that we know you know how that fits into the rest of the the puzzles that dark has given us what do we know with some knowledge about this area hmm. but charlena purcell who basically has mm-hmm. us on speed dial at this point so we go yeah. call charlena um, and Charlena agrees that she will start working on doing a little bit of research, see if she can find out the name of these crackers. At this point, we can head back to Shadow Ranch, but first we are definitely going to stop at Mary's to see what what was going on with her riding over close to Shadow Ranch. So we go in and we're like, hey, was that you over by Shadow Ranch today? And she's like, um, absolutely not. You know, Shadow Ranch is private property. I would never go on private property without permission. Don't even act like I would do something different. And Nancy's like, okay. Yikes. Uh, And then Mary's like so offended that we even asked her this that she won't talk to us anymore. At least not right now. So we ride back to Shadow Ranch for Mary's store. And we see, again, Mary's out there with her horse standing on the property line of Shadow Ranch. But this time, Tex is also there. With her and his horse. Ooh. Very what interesting. What are you doing, Corey? 
So we gonna, we're going to go ask Tex about this, obviously, but he's not even there when we come back into the ranch. Um, so we can't ask him about it immediately, but we can leave and come back. And we ask him about it, and he says, no, 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 you're wrong. That wasn't me or, or Mary. Clearly you saw somebody else that looked just like us, obviously. Mm, yeah, suspicious. <laughs> So we um, decide to pull a classic Nancy Drew move, and we go back know. to Mary Yazzie's. And we say, you know, Mary, I'm sorry I was, like, weird asking you about being over at Shadow Ranch earlier, but I couldn't help it, and I got text to talk to me, and he told me all about the two of you. And she's like, oh, I guess if Tex told you, then I can, like, you know, I can tell you the rest of the story, yeah, we're together. And like, <laughs> so Nancy totally blocks her way into this conversation, but she does get married to admit that, yeah, she and Tex have this like romantic thing going on, and she's completely in love with him. Oh my goodness. But apparently, oh my Tex. God. <laughs> um, Tex wants to keep it a secret, though, because he's worried that, like, with the property selling awkwardness between Mary and the Raleigh's, that it might, like, look bad on him or like make it look like he's conspiring against his employer with their enemy which seems like really extreme a dramatic but uh, okay. <laughs> yeah um but mary says that really he's just scared of not looking like he's this tough rough rugged guy right so okay um but so she does fun. tell us that the reason she wants to buy this land from the rallies is actually because they have a ton of petrified wood on it and she sells petrified wood in her store so that definitely makes, makes a lot sense. of sense yeah um we can also ask her about some nearby petroglyphs which is another one of the little places that we can stop basically on one of our trails um aside from mary Yazzie's and um, going to dry creek i think there's two different stops on the way there's like the cougar bend and there's a trail stop so we've seen seen some petroglyphs at this cougar bend place which is this rock formation that we can go visit um and she mentions that there's this place or she tells us about cougar bend actually i don't know if we can go there already or if it was one of the stops but she tells us about this and she says that most likely as far as they know it was made by the anasazi over 700 years ago so cool. Very cool. So cool. Um, and we do also notice on the table in her store, there's a brand new piece of petrified wood on display that we can ask about. And she says, oh, yeah, my friend found it. Your friend named Tex? Your special friend named Tex? Is that mm -hmm. who found it? Okay. All right. Um, but now we can go to Cougar Ben and look at some more of those petroglyphs. It is so cool. <laughs> I want to go here it so has bad. This, I want to go everywhere. I know. Shot it so bad. It has like this very huge like rock formation thing on it that we can climb all over, especially with the use of our brand new lariat that we got from Tex. Um, but it also looks kind of familiar. Um, and if you pull open the little piece of paper that came with Dirk's letter where he told Francis she needed to mark the rock formations, it looks exactly like that picture on the little grid that Dirk gave us. So what we have to do is we have to climb around this rock formation and fill in the picture with each of the petroglyphs somewhere they're supposed to go. And then once we put all of the glyphs in the right spot, we can decode a secret message that says, beneath Cappy's keys, Pappy's name, please. So this obviously must refer to the piano that is at Cappy's, but who is Pappy? Um, hmm. Maybe we should call Charlena again. <laughs> yes. Um, we do, and she tells us that Pappy actually probably refers to Dirk's father, Cashmere Valentine. And I find, What a name. I know. I find this character to be very interesting, and I want to talk about him later. I just think it's such an interesting detail. And I yes. don't want to talk about it. Um, so let's go. At Cappy's, there is a panel underneath the piano where we can obviously input the name Cashmere, and this, once we do that, opens a panel at the top of the piano, and inside of that panel is a note that says, take your forks and crank to BDI's ranch and make sure you see what's below. When you stick the forks in and give it a spin off towards my treasure, you'll go. What a good rhyme. Ah! <laughs> this is just like right up my alley. Man. Oh yeah. I love this. So this is a little bit of a puzzle, but the forks actually refer to tuning forks. 
And Mary Yazi has that set of tuning forks that has the initials FH on it. So that must be what we need. So her back to Mary. So we go. Um, and she says that we can have the tuning forks if we find 10 arrowheads for her. And these are kind of scattered around everywhere. And if there's a lot at the trail stop location. There's also some at Cooper Bend. There's some out at um, Dry Creek. And there's even a couple back at the ranch. So we just need to make sure we find all those. Um, and once we do, we can give them to Mary for the forks. But then, like, what does BDI's ranch refer to in his letter? Um, and I don't actually know how you're supposed to know this um, or figure this out. But there is, uh, at Dry Creek, there is this general store. And on the porch of the general store, there is a little plank that has the letters BD, um, like, branded on it. Um, and that's well, supposed the, to stand for BDI's branch. Sorry, the, the B and the D both have an, an I inside the letter. Uh, so it's oh, BDI's. This was a very common yeah. um, ranch practice was to brand your horse right. with, like, a pun of the name of your ranch. And so, yeah. And so having okay. letters that represent the name of it, that's, yeah. Gotcha. But that's like the only way you're supposed to know it. Okay. Anyway. So it just, you know, means you have to look around a little bit. But so once we find that little plank with the beady on it, if we look underneath of it, we see a little box that we're supposed to fit our tuning forks in. But we have to take it to Cappy's first to put it on the bar because there's like an outline of that box. And Nancy says that like it looks familiar when she looks at whatever. It, this is a weird part of the game. I think this is a little bit of a misstep for me because um, there's no reason why we should have to take this thing to Cappy's. The note should specify that we have to take the thing to Cappy's. Yeah, yeah. We um, shouldn't just have to know. We shouldn't just have to know. Anyway. Um, so when we do take it to Cappy's, put it on the bar, put the tuning forks in order, it just says Belle Francis, um, and then pull the crank, a nearby light fixture breaks. <laughs> and inside is another note that says, now go and peek below zebra rock, an attractor of metal, what's there, will unlock. I just think that this is just an extreme and intense way to get Francis to look inside a light fixture at Cappy's. Like, yeah, no, it is. Why do you it have is. to make like a a handmade like machine box situation that puts tuning forks in it that plays the tuning forks at such a frequency that breaks, that breaks glass. glass and you also didn't tell her that she needed to put it at Cappy's so how does she know and how do we know what glass is going to break and and why why wouldn't you just tell her to, some kind of riddle to get her to look inside of that light fixture that's what I don't understand yeah this, I think, is the only weird part, really weird part of the treasure hunt that doesn't make a lot of sense. But that's well, fine. and especially because he says take your cranks to the BDI's ranch, which is the, the BDI's ranch thing is on the porch. Mm -hmm. So you would think you do it there. Right. Oh, well. Um, but so now we need a magnet, an attractor of metal. That's what we need to get. We need to get a magnet. And we can get one off the fridge at Shadow Ranch. Um, and zebra rock is a rock at the trail stop that has a zebra pattern on it. It's really not that complicated of a puzzle, this one. Um, but when we go back to the ranch to find a magnet, it's the end of day two. So we'll have to do follow the rest of Dirk's clues tomorrow. Except we haven't finished the chicken coop yet, as Dave asked us to. So we need to get that done. But luckily, Dave has left all the supplies that he said he would. And it's a pretty simple puzzle to just put the pieces back in the right spot on the chicken coop. Um, but once we do and step back after completing that puzzle, we see that our gloves are glowing. What? Um, what? And then Nancy kind of like has a little flashback in her mind and realizes that this must be the dust or the powder or whatever it was that we touched on top of the books that were sitting at Cappy's in the ghost town. Hmm. And why would there be glowing powder out at the at Cappy's at Dry Creek? What else do we know that glows? Hmm. And Nancy just like suddenly knows that it's phosphorescent powder as well. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, and so speaking of glowing, we get our second phantom horse appearance. 
Um, the horse just comes galloping up, and then a power line on a nearby pole comes loose and starts sparking and jumping all over the place, which is terrifying. And that Love is it. the end of day two. So the next morning, day three, we're automatically, we start off with a phone call with Bess and George. Um, we learned that the ranch is now operating entirely off of a generator because of this accident. They still haven't gotten the power back online. Um, so we decided that we need to go back to that ghost town immediately to investigate this glow powder situation that was on our gloves. Um, and also to keep working on our treasure hunt, of course. But first we have to do our chores. So we have to go get the eggs. We have to get the, um, said the groceries, the produce from off the line, the vegetables. Um, but while we're outside, we see a horseshoe on the ground, possibly from the phantom horse, question mark. And we see that there's a little rock wedged into the horseshoe. So we take it to Tex and he says, yep, this rock must have come from the ghost town because... Obviously, those rocks are way different from any of the other types of rocks around here. Uh, and Tex also tells us that the last time that he was out of the ghost town, his horse acted really strange and tried to throw him, almost like something spooked the horse. Very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to talk to Dave as well, and we can mention the Tex and Mary thing to us, and he gets really weird. And us bringing up like a romantic situation, Romance. he asks, "You got to study back home." <gasps> and Nancy replies, "Sort of, <laughs> sort of, sort of." Oh my god, Nancy! We already talked about this, but gee, Louise, mm -hmm. like, poor. First of all, poor Ned. I don't care, but poor Ned, like. Yeah. It's just the fact that it's just so obvious that Nancy doesn't want to be in a relationship with him. Right. Oh, it just, it's so, uh, it, it gets, at this point it's not, but it, it, when you get to like all the way through the games to like, um, what's we call it? Sea of, sea darkness. of darkness. Yeah. It gets so awkward because it's yeah. like clearly this is not meant to be. <laughs> Do we talk about Ned much else in this game, or is it just up to us saying sort of? To, yeah, to no, I is don't. We literally don't. I mean, he's not even a phone contact, which I think, I think which is a mistake. Why? Think, he wasn't even invented yet with the book, so it I follows. I know, I know. You know but I like, think that if you're gonna have if you're gonna have this drama with Dave, you need Nancy to be able to be awkward with it around Ned too I guess yeah you know like he's gotta ask know. like you know well who have you met or whatever and we can you know talk about them but it'll be like awkward because obviously we think Dave's cute you know interesting um but but we can talk to Frank and Joe in this and as much as I love that I I do think that for drama's sake it probably should have been Ned who was okay other phone yeah but oh well I don't know. I'm kind of in favor of them going off the, the book. Um, yeah. Just not yeah. happened Ned yet. And then we kind of have that, I don't know, there's that awkward bit with the doctor in the book, too. That, like, the doctor's trying to hit on Nancy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the issue is that Ned was in previous games, right? Well, of and course, so it's yeah. like They can't act like he you, never existed. You can't act yeah. like he didn't exist. And so you can't have romance drama. Yeah. without him in it, you know, so. True. Very true, yeah. yeah. They did do a pretty anyway. good job of adapting this book, especially because this was the first time they ever tried to, like, directly adapt one of the original 56, so. I mean, all of the books are, especially the earlier ones, are supposed to be based off of the book, just none of them to date had been off of one of the original mystery stories. Well, and the only other one is um, Old Secret Clock. of the Old Clock, right? So, yeah. Well. Absolutely not great. <laughs> <laughs> I've read somewhere that Secret of the Wooden Lady was uh, essentially the inspiration for Sea of Darkness. It's just by the time oh. they got to Sea of Darkness, they were so um, they, far away. They, mm -hmm, they yeah. just, they'd gone away from the because of the start. It was like almost a direct um, adaptation from the book, and the ended wild. like yeah. closer to the end of the game series or closer to current day. Mm -hmm. They it's more inspired by rather than a direct. Right adaptation of the book so supposedly that's the adaptation for or the inspiration for sea of darkness 
and supposedly um, Wish Tree Sumble is Midnight in Salem. Right, but I wouldn't but even count those because no. Old Clock and Shadow Ranch are such good adaptations of the books that they're supposed mm-hmm. to be based on. Yeah. Well, yeah. arguably for Old Clock. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Sorry, yeah. I'm getting anyway. sidetracked here. Where no, was I? Oh, yeah, oh, sort yeah. of. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, um, we, we do some more of our chores, and then we go ask Tex if we can go riding, and he says, no, I need you to assemble this bridle first, so we have to reassemble a bridle, and then we're allowed to go riding. So we decide first we can stop at Zebra Rock because it's kind of on our way anyway, um, so we go to this trail stop, and we lift up this Zebra Rock, which is this massive rock, and underneath it is this magnet puzzle, which we have to like use the magnet to slide these washers inside the maze to get them to the correct point inside the maze. It's just a big fancy this. maze. Yeah, it takes it's forever. It's so annoying. And the magnet <laughs> drops the thing all the time, so you have to like mm-hmm. find it to pick it up again, whatever. Eventually we do get it open, and when we get it open, we find a box inside of it, inside the box. Um, that has a bunch of flowers on top. So this is, of course, reference to Francis's favorite. So we have to figure out which flower goes in which position, basically, on the box. Um, so at this point, Bess and George have emailed us. So we check our email and we find the bead pattern for the purse that we would found in the basement. So um, we go to Mary's. She gives us some beads that we can use to recreate the pattern on this purse. And then we can start fixing the purse. Um, This is another little puzzle that we have to do, but eventually we fix the purse and we find that that is a poppy. Um, We also, in our email, Charlena has emailed us a link to a website to find more information about those crackers from Cappies, and we see that they were called sunflower crackers. So that is all of Francis's favorite flowers. Um, We can open up that box by putting all the flowers in the correct order, and inside the box is another box, and this one is a music box. Um, and there's a note in it that tells us that we need to wind her up, her being the music box. Yeah. Um, so the crank is over at Cappy's in that other music box thing that we use to break the light. So we go back there. And when we get to Cappy's, it turns out we can't use that crank, but we do see that the sleeping bag that had been in the corner is now gone. And in its place is just this old key. It turns out to be the key to Dirk's locked jail cell. Yay! Okay, so obviously we run right over to pick that up. And we are knocked out from behind. Thwap! Everything fades to black. And Nancy wakes up inside the jail cell. Oh my god! Oh my god. So... The key is actually hanging on a hook just inside the jail cell, just out of reach from where (laughs) where we can, like, reach through the bars to grab it. This is crazy! If if you've just kidnapped someone, put them in a jail cell, locked it up with that key, you're like, I know. I'll just leave this just right here. You don't take it with you. You leave it on the wall in the jail cell where she is. Right. (laughs) Unbelievable. (laughs) <laughs> mediocre kidnappers, man. Right. Bad at their jobs. <laughs> they are terrible kidnappers, but convenient for us. <laughs> yeah, very convenient. So, this is a little convoluted, but we do have to come in here to find Dirk's message anyway, so we might as well just find it while we're in here. Um, it's just tally marks, basically, scratched on the wall, and the number of tally marks is the letter in the alphabet that we have to, to use. So we spell it out. It says under bank lamp. Okay. So this must be referring to the bank that's in dry Creek. Um, so now we can try to get out of here. We have to use a brick, which there's just a pile of bricks from, you know, a brick wall that has just fallen over time. Um, so we grab some loose bricks, throw it at the key and then get the key to like land on this chair. And then we use our lasso to pull the chair closer to us. And then we can grab the key from there. So finally we get out of here Um, and we actually see a piece of paper on the ground on our way out of the jail cell that our kidnappers must have dropped. Um, and it appears to be a note from Dark Valentine, I guess explaining to his gang of outlaws how a certain, like, how to decode certain codes that they're using within their, their group. Um, and so there's a note that's a more recent note on this note from Dark that says, like, the code that I found in the cellar works great. Let's use it for our own purposes, basically. 
Um, this code looks familiar to us, though. Um, it exactly matches that coded message that we found in the fire pit at Shadow Ranch. Um, so we can decode that right here now. It says, we'll need more supplies if ranch is not soon check message shelf again. Dirk might have hidden it right under Sheriff's nose. Hmm. All right. Weird. All right. <laughs> so somebody is definitely using the ranch and looking for Dirk's treasure is what we can gather from this. Um, but we do also need to go check under the bank lamp. Can't forget about that. Um, we go over there and there's a loose brick that you can pull out. And behind it is a letter. And it says, did you know that you can play some games more than one way? I'll tell you how. Use the ring that is the twin of Ellie's, your cousin, in Cappy's fun machine now. Alrighty. So good. <laughs> you want to take it from here? Sure. So we have to go find that ring, so we should probably go talk to Dave about that. And he just has it on him, and he just gives it to us. He just lets us borrow it. No chore required, no, no tradesies required to get it. He just lets us borrow it. Excellent. So now we can go back to Dry Creek and use the ring on Cappy's game. And now we have to find the nicest gang in the old West instead of the meanest, which is the way you had to win it before. But it's just the same thing. It's just reversed. Um, and once we win that, this time we get a little key. And this is what we're supposed to use in the music box to open it, to wind it up. Once we do that inside the music box, we see another note. It says... On the paper you got when you first began, draw lines between the pictures shown here. If you draw them in order, you'll find something you need behind the picture that you make appear. So we do that on the little piece of paper that Dirk gave us with the pictographs on it. And it, we see a V is what we draw. And if we remember out at Copper Gorge, there is a rock that has like an engraved V Cougar on Cougar Bend. It. Cougar Bend. What did I say? Copper Gorge is from last train. <laughs> There's so many similarities between there this are. game and that game. It's okay. <laughs> that so, Copper Gorge is Dry Creek. When we do see pictures of that, it's just taken from this game. Really? Uh huh. Oh, that's but yeah. Funny. The cliff face that's at Dry Creek, that's Buell's. You can see it. They just oh. changed the name from Cappy's. Yeah. It's great. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's very funny. Yeah. Um, so. We have to go out to Cougar Bend to go look at this V rock. And when we do behind it, we find a note and then this very scuffed, like very circular rock. Um, and the note says, at Charlie's grave, hold this up, look around, and you'll see the trail to a gift to you from me. And there is an old grave at the trail stop for Charlie the donkey. <laughs> um, but the rock that we have is too scuffed. To see anything with so we're gonna need to polish it somehow mary does a lot of jewelry stuff and rock stuff so she probably has a rock polisher so we take it to her and she'll polish it for us and then we take it back to the trail stop hold it up by charlie's grave and we see a vista that looks just like the one on the rock mm -hmm. and so we take bob and just go off down that trail we're going to find the treasure. Yay. We're going to find the treasure. So Come excited. on, Bob. Mm -hmm. I just have to ask one thing. So this note that Dirk left this time behind this V-Rock, how the heck did that survive a hundred years out just exposed to the elements? This is Arizona where there are like... Once in that time. How... How that makes no sense. No. no sense. All of the rest of them are enclosed in something, so I understand. But this note is just literally just sitting under a rock out there. Yep. And the lizards but don't steal this. How did it not get eaten by insects and moths? How did it rain not wash it away? There is like torrential rains that happen. Aunt Bet even warns us about the rains that can come with a flash flooding, which never happens in this game, but is a reference to the book. But mm -hmm. and then how <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Anyway. Um, so we take Bob off down this trail that we found from the trail stop. And we arrive at ancient cliff dwellings. Oh! Oh my god. So cool. Um, we have to, like, 
it's like up in the side, you know, dug out in the side of this mountain, all of these different dwellings. So we have to use our lasso to lasso up and pull ourselves up to be able to get to them and explore them. Um, and outside of this maze of these dwellings, there is a code from Dirk written in the same way that his, you know, his note explains. Um, and it tells us the correct way to navigate through this maze to get to the location where he hid his treasure. Um, we follow a specific order of colored rocks. But as we're going through this maze, we also need to make sure that we're collecting a bunch of keys that are just scattered here, kind of throughout this maze which is so, you, I always miss a key. I inevitably miss one key. No. And I have to navigate all the way back through and start all the way back over. So annoying. Anyway, it's like a pretty intensive, this is probably one of the hardest, I think, puzzles, just because it gets so confusing in there with the colors, especially when you're trying to like backtrack. Um, but it's also important to note that when you're doing this, the rocks above the doors that we're following are movable. And there are some pretty precarious places in here that we need to be careful of. There's including like this room off the side that has just a hole. It's just a giant hole in the floor that you could just step in and walk through. But there's like a rug covering it so you would never see it. <laughs> Scary. How um, kind of, I guess, dark to bring that one rug there? I know. I, uh, okay. Well, no, I assume the rug is... Yeah, is the rug there from 700 years old? Probably like, not, that, right? No like way. nothing else they have is... Yeah, okay. Anyway. It is very, very threadbare, but 700 years is a long time for a rug. It looks like 100 years threadbare, not right. 700, yeah. you know? So, yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, anyway, once we make it through that maze and all the way getting all the keys, we see a door with a lock on it that we have to fit all these keys into. And then you do this big slider thing that turns all the keys at once and the door opens. And inside of that room is Dirk Valentine's treasure. It's a box of solid gold hearts. Oh! My God. I just... Okay. Ha, why? Is this, like, like, saddest? <laughs> like... It is very sad. He's also, yeah. like, decorated the room with, like, you know, big hearts on the walls and Francis's name. It's clearly just like this one big, like, homage, homage to, to Francis her. and yeah. how much he loves Francis. It's very sweet. But my question is, this is what, 1880s, right? We're in the yeah. 1880s. Who did, who, he, where did he get this gold from, first of all? Second of all, what blacksmith or whatever was like, yeah, I'll melt down all of this gold and form them into what has to be at least a hundred tiny little gold hearts well this was his um his heist treasure that he stole mm -hmm. right and that's why he eventually got hung was because yeah. he stole all this gold and he right. must have just had somebody who was a metal worker <laughs> melted it all down maybe they were scared of him and were like yes dirk i will reshape maybe. as many hearts as you would like maybe. just don't shoot me <laughs> seems like like maybe just do like one bigger solid gold heart or something Instead of like yeah, 190 it might be harder ones. to carry. I don't know. Who knows? It's romantic though, and they're it like, is. they like shine. The light hits mm -hmm. them, and they like sparkle, and it's oh, it's so. It's very cool. Yeah, it's so sweet. But so we've done it. We found Dirk Valentine's treasure. I guess we can go now. Like where do you know? So we turn around to leave the room. Unfortunately, when we look down into the maze, because we're kind of up above it at this point, we see. That someone has followed us. And it is Shorty. He <gasps> sees us standing up here on this cliff. And he asks us, did you find the treasure yet, Nancy? Oh. oh, dear. Okay, so he's the one who sabotaged the ranch. He and his buddies, who actually turn out to be those bank robbers from Denver that we read about in the paper, um, wrangled, he tells us they wrangled that horse and, you know, wreaked all that havoc on the ranch to get the Raleigh's to sell so that they can search the ranch for Dirk Valentine's missing gold, right? But when we showed up, Shorty got wise and realized, hey, I could just follow this girl because she's clearly, you know, she's got to figure it out. To figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> and he just says that he just ran off our horse. So now we're out here, you know, alone with Shorty. 
and have to get back through this maze the same way that he is coming in through the maze. We have to find a way to get out, get around him and, and get out of here somehow, right? He also says the most horrifying thing right before he's like essentially like, I'm going to come kill you, Nancy. He says, ready or not, here I come. Uh, <laughs> no yeah so we have to figure out how to sneak past shorty here um but you remember the hole in the floor with the rug situation and the fact that these stones are switchable realize okay so we can go down to that area switch the stone so that he goes through the wrong door and shorty falls through the hole um he doesn't die though which is a bit of a shame um He's just stuck, like, out on this ledge, which is far enough down where he can't get back up into the cliff dwelling. But, of course, we're not going to help him back up. Instead, we call the sheriff to come help him back out of the hole. And this is the end of the game, and we get our final letter. Nancy is writing to Hannah, and she explains that because Shorty had driven her horse off, she had to ride his horse back to the ranch to call the sheriff. Only the horse that Shorty rode out there was actually the phantom horse. And by the time that she gets back, it's like dark outside. And so Nancy is riding this glowing phantom horse back into the ranch and scaring everyone. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so funny. Um, she tells us that, you know, Tex is now taking care of this horse and the horse is just fine. The Raleigh's are now back home from the hospital. Um, and Mary has even patched things up with them. And she and Tex have brought their relationship out of the closet. Um, Dave did confess to the Raleigh's about looking for the treasure and they forgave him and offered to split the treasure 50, 50 with him. Um, if it turns out they can actually keep it, which is currently unclear and being investigated. Um, but Bess and George have finally arrived at the ranch and everybody's having a good time and enjoying their vacation. Why would the Raleigh's get to keep the treasure? I have no idea. It it's not make like it was sense. found on their property. It doesn't seem like it. Unless they, there's no way that they could own cliffs where ancient cliff dwellings were. There's, there's no, no way. way the ranch is that big, especially because Mary Yazzie's property is between it's you not know, really where we ride it though it's just because like if you look at the map like shadow ranch is down like i don't know which way it's oriented but if the top of the map is north and the bottom of the map is south shadow ranch is like at the south ish middle mm -hmm. part of the map and then the you know the cliff dwellings are kind of just off to the right just felt like there's other things between the cliff dwellings and shadow ranch that it's like there's no way there would be well, a property line somewhere some... in here there's definitely, like, geographical stuff, like, probably big, like, a mountain or mesas or whatever sure. in between the ranch. But that doesn't necessarily mean they don't own it. I don't know how big the property is. They could have quite a bit of that land. Maybe. I don't know. I just assumed that they didn't own those cliff yeah. dwellings. So but it's there's like... no way that they could own the cliff dwellings. Like, there's no, that's got to be, like, a national heritage site or something. So I could see, like, Dave not getting to keep it, even though, like, it was left to Ellie, technically, and then Ellie left it to him. But, yeah, but it's also stolen goods. Right, like, so, it's also stolen gold, which is the same issue that we ran into in um, Haunted Mansion. Mansion. High Mansion, yeah. yeah. So, I, 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 could, I mean, I guess <laughs> Dave has, I guess, the most claim to it. I would guess, or I right. would understand why he wouldn't get to keep it, because it's like, okay, well, we found this on, like, national property, so it's, like, government right. property, and now it's going to go into a museum. I don't see any claim that the Raleigh's have to it mm. whatsoever. It's like, mm -hmm. someone... Unless it was on their land, which doesn't seem much. It seems very um, yeah. unlikely. It's like, someone who used to live here almost <laughs> came into possession of something that has never actually physically been on our property, so that makes us the rightful owners. How? That just doesn't make any sense to me. It anyway, that's not important. It definitely doesn't. <laughs> what a game, though. So good. And then at the end, we get our um, our trailer for Curse of Blackmore Manor. Oh, yes. Yes. I think Curse of Blackmore Manor might be my favorite game. Really? I think so. I don't think it's always been my favorite game. Okay. I think it's definitely changed. 
But I think if I were to consider now and look back, sorry, this is entirely off topic. That's like, but if I were to look back now and say which game was my favorite, it probably would be Curse of Black. Yeah. It's just so good. Maybe one day we'll cover that. Oh, we'll have to. Yeah. We have to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, great game. Great game, don't you think, Excellent Corey? Excellent game. My favorite game, definitely. What is it that I wanted to talk about? There was something that I was saying. I want to talk about this later. Oh, I think it was Dirk's dad. So. Oh yes, Cashmere. Okay. So I just think it's such a he's. This is such a fascinating thing to put in, and I didn't really talk about it in the summary. But Charlena kind of explains that Dirk actually like really like idolized his father, but his father disowned him when he, you know found out what Dirk was up to with all the outlaw stuff or whatever. Right. But then his father was also like a, a like revered blacksmith in a nearby town. I just think that like there's so much I wonder if there's like so much history that like that was created for this game that like we never even got to because it just feels like such a like untapped relationship that we we literally just get a couple sentences from Charlena about it and that's it. But it's like Could enough that, that who he helped used. Dirk melt down his heart. I thought about that. Okay. I thought about that. But unless it was just like a ruse that he had actually disowned him and he still actually did care about and associate with his son. Oh, okay. But he only yeah. did that to like, you know. Public perception. Right. To affect things. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Interesting. But I just, especially with his name being the solution to one of the puzzles, I felt like that was like really pointed like it could have been anything else like it could have been like some kind of inside joke between francis and dirk or some other location that was significant to them or any anything could have been the name of the horse like right anything but instead it was his dad's name like i don't know maybe they just needed to rhyme cappy with something they're like happy there we go so yeah, Pappy maybe. could be a grandfather, that could be Francis's grandfather. We've already heard about Francis's grandfather. You know, like it didn't mm-hmm. have to be Dirk's dad. That is yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But alas, we don't get that. We don't get that those kinds of details. But yeah. Oh well. Oh well. I want a whole backstory just on Francis. I and Dirk. know. It's just such a rich, like, story as it is. And so to think about, like, how much more exists behind it is so juicy. Mm-hmm. So juicy to think about. Such a good setting. Such a good, just, story overall. And, like, legend and the lore. It's just like, uh-huh. ah, I want to be Charlena Purcell coming to visit yeah. Shadow Ranch. <laughs> <sighs> be an old author lady writing romance novels. Eating cake and enjoying the sights of hot young cowboys there you go you know (laughs) it just sounds great a lot of these games have the like you know historical mystery that ties into the main mystery or somehow some clue from way back in the day becomes relevant now or it becomes part of the crimes that the bad guys committing and i cannot think of a game that doesn't any better than dirk valentine and francis humber Mm -hmm. so amazing Mm mm-hmm yeah, it really is a hallmark of all of these fancy drew games that there's just some weird random historical thing that they're explaining to us oh, yeah. in order for us to fall further the mystery. And I love it. It's so yeah. good. It's also such a nice way to make it, like, educational, you know, mm-hmm. without making it uninteresting at all. Like, it's right. so fascinating to learn all this stuff. I love it. And all of the random tasks that are, like, you're learning, you know, how to bake in this game. We were learning about measurements and stuff. It's just so, so good. Learning so. how to pick ripe vegetables. Well, that's weird, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is weird. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it so much. It's so good. You learn, you learn about like horsemanship and you learn about like, you know, what names there are for the different parts of a horse and, you know, different types of horses from tech. Like all, it's so cool. It's yes. just such a cool concept, and I'm never going to get over it. I love this game. I do feel like we need to talk a little bit about some of the animations in this game. Okay. Some of it's a little rough. Oh, it's, I mean, um, it's 2004. It's going to be right. rough. Yeah. Yeah. But, but like, so, like, Tex, whenever 
you he like turns to look at you you're like walk into the little spot off of like the horse stalls or whatever mm-hmm. where he hangs out and he turns to look at you he's holding something in his right hand I have no idea. It's like some little piece of metal. I have no idea what that's supposed to be, but it looks 100%. And when I was a child, I thought it was 100% he was pointing a gun at us. Oh, no. It looks like he's holding a gun at us. And I was like, oh, my God. Hands up, don't shoot, man. Like, what (laughs) is going on? I Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Tex did have a gun. Yeah. I know. It also felt, like, so in character because he's, like, grizzled and so angry with us. And Mm -hmm. he's got that bandana and the cowboy hat on it was like you are are you what is this what is happening right. are you an outlaw are you trying to rob us right now like <laughs> there's that there's also and I mentioned this to you before we started recording Corey but I just also want to mention to our listeners that when Shorty chases us out or comes out into the maze and we see him standing down there his pants on are, oh, are so tight are so tight that the camel toe situation happening on Shorty is like so disturbing to look at. Yeah. And I think I'm going to post that screenshot somewhere so that you can see it and know what I'm talking about because, Oh my God. (laughs) It's a lot. Right in your face. Hello, Shorty. Here, Shorty. Yep. There he is. It's not a Shorty. It's not a Shorty though. It's a, it's there. A longy? No, that's Ew. not good. No. I don't want to think about that. Never <laughs> mind. <laughs> Never mind. Think about it. Um, so, yeah. There's also at the end when you get all the the uh, little pictures, you know, when Nancy is writing her letter to Hannah. The le- Some of the pictures there are clearly just not super great. There's the one where she's on the horse, which is very interesting because it's probably the first full silhouette, like, detailed silhouette mm-hmm. that we can see of Nancy. It's probably the most that we can ever see of Nancy. Um, but also the horse is, like, standing in the campfire, and where it's, like, back right leg should be is where Dave is sitting. And so it's just very clearly, like, a bad, like, bad juxtaposition. Up. Yeah, bad job on that. But it's bad. It's bad that it's – it's so bad that it's funny. So right. I will – I will excuse it because it's entertaining, you know. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Oh, we never learn if Bob is okay. Shorty oh, yeah. runs our horse off out there. He tells us he's done that, and then we don't. In our le- in our final letter, we never hear if Bob made it back to the ranch. Okay. We do himself. because. We learned that Bess and George finally made it, and then we get the picture of the three of them riding their three horses. Is it Bob, Bob Ace, Bob? and Clive? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. I didn't, I'm pretty I sure that's him in the picture. picture. Mm, it's not mm-hmm. clear, though. It's not specified. Oh, okay. And I, yeah. I don't like that they don't say specifically, Bob is back at the horse ranch just fine. He's okay. I'm saying it now. Bob is A-okay. Okay. <laughs> and actually, he's the best horse ever. We love him. I love Bob. So cute. So, what flashlight score would you give it, Corey? Five. Easily five, five. flashlights. 5,000 flashlights. What about you? Yeah, I gotta give it five flashlights, too. It's just so good. It's so well done. Well constructed. Good. Such good voice acting. Such yeah. good dialogue. You know, it's from 2004. But even considering that, it's like, it's a good game. It's got a good puzzle. Oh, yeah. It's got a really great flow. They clearly knew what they were doing at this point, And it's just, yeah, I don't think you can really get much better than this game. Not a whole lot of it doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just endlessly entertaining. So, yes. by flashlights, yeah. Yes. Oh, so good. Well... That brings us to our next game, because we are going to stick to the games for a little bit longer here. Do you want to tell them what we're going to play next? Sure. Let me do the drum roll, because I just figured out how to do the drum roll. (laughs) Next up, Corey, we are going to be covering... The Phantom of Venice. (laughs) Another top game for me, so I'm very excited about this one as well. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you to our patrons who voted on that topic. I am 100% sure that they voted on it just because they want to hear us talk about um, Nancy in her cat suit dancing at a nightclub. Mm -hmm. So join us then, regular Drew, <laughs> as we talk about Punchy LaRue, um, Nancy's <laughs> alter ego. Um, y'all bargain for Punchy LaRue. Y'all are not banking on how much I'm going to talk about Scopa. So... <laughs> You know, get what you get. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very exciting stuff. So we will see you then, regular Drews. Yeah, join us next time. Thank you for listening to Regular Nancy Drew. Email us at regularnancydrew at gmail.com. If you like this episode, make sure to rate, review, and subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram at regular Nancy Drew and Twitter at regular ND. You can also support us on Patreon. Patrons at the $3 level vote on upcoming episode topics and get exclusive access to our Scoop Sesh series. And all patrons receive early access to each episode as well as weekly bonus content. And to all you regular Drews out there, thanks, thanks for, for listening. listening.